want to bring in Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman now and Dan Geltrude of Geltrude and Company. Good morning to you both. Hey. All right, so you've heard a, a lot of things here at the top of the show regarding the government shutdown. I'll start with you, Dan. Does it matter at all, really, to the markets? I, I don't think the government shutdown, per se, as a standalone, is really an issue to the market because I don't think there's a lot of economic effect to the government shutting down. However, I think the issue is, is the uncertainty of what's going on with this White House. Now, split government is not a problem. Historically, the markets have actually done very well under split government. However, the chaos that we're seeing going on surrounding the White House is really an issue. I mean, I don't want to have to get to a point where we're referring to the president as President Grinch based upon what's going on right now, mm -hmm. but it seems like he may be causing a lot of what's happening in the market. And if you look at history, the, the last 20 shutdowns that we've had since 1976, the S&P 500 has actually gone up more than half the time. So I think you're right. It doesn't matter much to the markets. But what if it goes on and on, which it could potentially could? Wouldn't a lengthy one affect the markets? Well, it's kind of a problem that so solves itself, uh, because if this starts to cause real uh, harm to the economy, which I agree, it's not going to for a long time. But if it does, uh, then that just creates pressure for, uh, you know, the parties involved to solve it. Um, I don't think markets are reacting to the shutdown. I think the markets are basically sending a message to President Trump, which is get your act together. Uh, and, you know, each one of these things in itself as a data point uh, is not necessarily uh, that concerning. But you put it all together. Uh, I mean, the big thing for the markets is the Treasury Secretary implying that there's a problem in an economy where they're trying to say everything's great. I mean, calling up, you know, the, 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 six, the, the six biggest banks and saying, do you have stable liquidity? I mean, what is going on here? That is crazy. Do you think that that's crazy, and is that what's sort of spooking investors? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, why, why would the Secretary of the Treasury be making that call just on a whim? Obviously, there has to be some concern. And look, Steve Mnuchin is a, is a smart guy. He knows by making a call like that that there's going to be talk, and he was still willing to do it in spite of people who are going to say, hey, what's going on? So Here, was here's, that important, here's, here's what I'm sure is going on. I'm sure Trump said to Mnuchin, I think he's doing this at the direction of the president. He has to be. Mm -hmm. Trump said, I need you to get out there and do something to reassure markets, even if you have to do these things. Mnuchin probably said, not a great idea, boss. The markets might anyway. not take it the way you want. Yeah. But I think Trump said, go do this. He did it. And it's having the, the opposite of what I'm sure is Trump's desired effect. It is not calming markets. Yeah. It's unnerving markets. I think the problem that we're having right now is, is President Trump is running the country like he runs the Trump Organization. So being the one and only, the end all be all, the buck stops with him and he could make unilateral decisions may work fine in private industry. But it's not going to work in government because there are so many unintended consequences for everything that he says, does, and the actions that are taken by people yeah. he's instructing. So there's a lot of things I think that the president are, is failing to consider when he's making these decisions. It's not unilateral. Just to remind everybody, the biggest issue for markets with regard to policy is still the trade war with China. Uh, that We haven't seen any movement on that right. recently. Uh, but that is that is clearly having a depressing effect on stocks. And then you just, you know, you dribble dribble all this other stuff in there and it's just weighing everything down in markets. But Dan, you're pretty optimistic for 2019. Tell us why. Yeah, I am optimistic. And, I, and I'll tell you why is I actually think that the issues with China are going to get resolved. Maybe not because the president is such a, a great negotiator, but China is under enormous pressure with their markets to have to make a deal. So no matter what deal that's ultimately arrived at, however we negotiate it, we're going to be at a better position than we are today. I still say that we do get a deal with China. Will the president get everything he wants? Maybe not, but we're going to, I think, make some progress there. And I am optimistic about two, 2019. I think there's some real opportunities related to big tech. Uh, big tech has lost about a trillion of market cap. I, I think there's uh, some room for growth there for companies like Apple and Amazon and Facebook. I, I, I think there's reason to be optimistic. I agree with you. There will be a deal on China. And I think another reason is Trump is really going to need a deal. His hand is weakening as well. True. All right, guys, thanks so much. We appreciate it.